Welcome to the podcast with Face, Pat, and Tiz. On the screen. Oh, that was Alba and Priest. That's for my uh, topic. I was just making sure that the video. Was oh, okay. I'm about to say, who the fuck is the other niggas? We got guests and shit. No, nah, but Sean Juan is coming on again in the next couple of weeks to uh, join us. Bet shit. Yeah, I know that nigga. I ain't know the other two niggas. <laughs> Uh, no, they're my uh, they're my homies. I've been preach, man. They good folk. They good folk. Oh, okay. You know I don't fuck with new niggas unless somebody I know fuck with. Them, so, watch, watch they shit. Trust me. Like they perspective will make you think, even if you disagree with them, you'll enjoy it. It's good content. Mm-hmm. I get a lot of our, yeah. I get a lot of our topics from their channel. To be honest, mm-hmm. like like they which I've uh, been preach. Like I feel oh like yeah! Hey, if you ever want to hear a good story, watch Mr. Ballin podcast or Mr. Ballin on on Spotify not, or YouTube. I'm not. If you want to hear some good stories, if you want to be <laughs> pretty uh, terrifying story. Weird German yelling and and shit and yeah, it, it, yeah. Oh yo, you oh, know no. what? Um, he is one of the top podcasters of the world right now. Like he, oh, I, I saw his. Uh, I know he got uh, recognized for something recently. Like I don't know whether it was a record he broke or something, but he did something big in the podcast world recently. So I do know that he's definitely a numbers generator. Um, stories. Oh, yeah. I don't know if y'all heard it. Have y'all? Um, y'all might not heard of this, but they got this documentary on HBO. Um, uh, HBO Max, right? Called. Mm-hmm. Uh, Murdoch's uh what is it family of influence or something like that about Rupert Murdoch and his family? Yeah. Oh privileged well, ass nigga. But when I what, that brings me back to what we was talking about actually though. That's good. <laughs> He's a privileged family. They come Yo. from old I'm gonna tell you another privilege though. Being you, you two niggas is a privilege in America. As much as it is scary, as much as it has been detrimental, as much as it causes you pain at times, as much as it causes you to be ostracized by a normal society sometimes, as much as it causes you to be looked at by the white police in uh-huh. anger, it is a privilege. So I, I had this Sally Mae loan, right? Now, uh-huh. my wife was my co-signer when I was in school, so obviously, you know, we married and shit, so that shit go together. So, like, she got on the phone with them talk to them, whatever. Shit was what it was. I got on the phone with them today for five minutes. No, <laughs> just, it was yesterday morning. Yesterday morning for five minutes. And because I was an assertive black man, just because I had the voice that sounded scary and I had the direct tone and direct language that wasn't beating around the bush or sound timid. It was just direct to the point. It wasn't aggressive. It was just, mm-hmm. hey, I need this to be done. <clears throat> I found that I lost $3,000 off that loan. My rate got lowered $74 a month, and my interest rate got lowered 3%. Hmm. And it took hmm. me five minutes. My wife has been on the phone with them since October. Being a black man has a privilege. I, I never realized it. I never thought about it, but I remember last week when we was talking about when uh, Face was talking about his job. He was talking. We was talking about like crazy recognized crazy and real recognized real. I, what it is is I think is that you are one of three people in this world. You are either an alpha, which is not aggressive. It's assertive. It's I'm very direct. I know what I want. I'm trying to get this accomplished. There is no ulterior motive. It's no around the bush. It's no let's go over here to get here. It's no let me ask you three questions to get to the question I want to know. It's very just cut and dry. This is what it is. Boom, boom, boom. Let's get it done. Or you are a baby. I am not necessarily willing to make all those decisions, but I can follow those decisions very well. I'm a soldier. It's like you're a general or a soldier, or you are the uh, 
the Omega, which is like the I'm pulling up the rear of the pack. I'm more of just defense. I don't have any offense. It's just whatever happens in life, I'm gonna just react to it and we're gonna make it through that. Mm-hmm. And I realize that most black men, because of the way we are conditioned and socialized and grow up in the world, like we are forced to be alphas, which is why we are often by society seen as like hyper aggressive or hyper the like hyper masculine and hyper like that's why we have the fear of the black man in America is because like mm-hmm. there's masculine and then there's super alpha. And I feel like we are trained to be that without necessarily realizing we're trained to be that but just because of the way life kind of throws shit at us as kids and teenagers you have no choice Judah, by the time you're like 18 19 that you're already trained in that way of thinking of like i can't cur i can't back away i can't wait for anything to happen i kind of just have to see it and then just do it and if i fail cool but i gotta just kind of go mm. i need to Done. I don't really have time to have a long conversation because while I'm having this conversation, there's three more I need to be having. So let me hurry up and get you off the phone and get what I need done done from you. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's that type of I need this bill paid, but I still got three more. So I ain't got time to be on the phone with you all day. How can I get this bill paid really quickly? And mm-hmm. what can you, if you can't do it for me, can you connect me to the next person up from you that can that can get but I ain't about to sit here and talk to you for 30 minutes to just get to that. I ain't about to tell you how I feel or, oh, you know, I've been going through this. No, look, this is my situation. Can you help? If not, get me to the next person that can help me the quickest and the best. And I think because we are socialized like that, we don't often realize it, but that is an advantage. That means that in going into social situations, we almost have a, a trump card already because already we are putting the other party on defense, whether it's a black mm-hmm. woman women a white man or a asian person like whatever the person is if they're not another black man they're often going to be automatically put on defense because we're either going to be bigger voice deeper more intimate more outgoing more ex- extroverted more strong more fast more apt to do this more comfortable more cool it's going to always be something that's before we've even spoken to the person, they've already got this thing in their head where they're like, I need to be intimidated a little bit about something. No. Look at that as a negative, but I realized to like yesterday that that's a positive. Like I literally in five minutes often get done what it may take my wife, another colleague, another person, uh, a person of another race, somebody else to do like, it'll take them hella long, but me, I just boom, boom, boom. And I realize it's not like I, it, I'm something special. I realize it's just because I'm a black man. Like, it's it's the automatic thing of I've been trained to do this without knowing that. And that has mm-hmm. nothing to do with nothing, but I just thought it was a cool moment. It was just a cool moment to be a black man. I wanted to share that with two other black men. Like, basking your black man in this. I don't know that that's a real term or that that's grammatically correct, but basking that shit. I, I, I'll say in my experience, really I feel is. like I feel like it's almost like people already know, look, I go through too much shit. I don't want to deal with your bullshit. Let's get this done quickly. And as a person that used to be in the customer service um, phone field in general, you're one of my favorite calls. People that come in tell me exactly what the, they want, and I don't got to guess. I don't got to figure out the shit for them or whatever. Perfect well, fucking call. Cool. That's how we are privileged because the only other people who have the exact same energy as we do are business like or rich Caucasian men. Mm. And who's the power structure in the world? Like, oh, so, so I watched this movie Emancipation today, too. I didn't get through the whole thing yet, but I'm about mm-hmm. a third of the way through, right? Got Will Smith in it. He's the main character. It's basically based on the life of the black man. If y'all ever seen the uh, picture, it's like the most famous slave picture ever. Or the picture of the black man turned to the side with his back showing all of the lash marks. Yeah, yeah. It was like, um, it was like, credited as like the first viral photo because it was like the photo that made people around the world kind of wake up to the atrocities of chattel slavery. So like. Yeah. But it's about him, about him leaving 
the situation he was in in Louisiana to go to Baton Rouge to join with the Union Army who was already who already had freed the slaves. Because if you remember, Lincoln freed the slaves, but then it was still quite a bit was, of time. Lincoln freeing the slaves and the Confederate slave plantations and the slaves that were still there to actually get free. So yeah, because what happened news. was yeah, a lot of people migrated up to Baton Rouge where the Union Army had set up camp. So that they can get under the union laws and go ahead and get free, get their freedom. So this is about him and him kind of leading a slave, not yeah. a rev- but like a escape on some Harriet Tubman yeah. type shit. But the dope part about it was the the thing that brings it into tying into what I was talking about before I go off on the damn tangent. Uh, what I noticed in the movie is. All of the different slave, right? All of the different slave men, right? Were one of those three mm. archetypes, right? And I noticed that Will, throughout the entire time that I've watched so far, he's been very alpha. He hasn't been aggressive at all. There's been no movement towards any um, perceived slight, but there's been mm-hmm. no back and forth from. There's been a very direct, I'm trying to help my brother right now. He just fell out. I'm helping this other man. That's the right thing to do. I don't care that you got the gun to my face telling me not to help him. This is the right thing mm-hmm. to do. So tear each other down and you're gonna kill me or I'm gonna go help him. But either way, my intention is to help him. I'm moving that direction. And whether you do what you do or not, that is gonna be my intention until you do something to stop that. So, like, and I noticed that you find the other white men who are in the actual power position, not necessarily backing down, but respecting it. Like, oh, you one of them cold ones, huh, nigga? Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. But you didn't pull that trigger, though, motherfucker. And throughout the whole backdrop, you see them pulling the trigger on different slaves for passing out, not working, that type of thing. So you see that they're very Mm -hmm. willing to do it. You see that that energy, when it's matched with its equal force, huh, all right, Mm -hmm. just chill out a little bit then, all right. So I noticed that, like, we are privileged. And I just wanted y'all to just leave... If nothing else through tonight, if I don't say nothing else that make any sense, because again, I uh, pissy is also another word for tonight. Uh, if we're gonna stick with the peas, because I'm also coming from a bourbon tasting, so I'm a little tipsy. I, I've been, <laughs> I've been drinking, I've been drinking. Oh, uh, so uh, yeah. But if I'm coming all clear, oh, I just wait for tonight conversation with nothing else but knowing that you are powerful and privileged because you are a black man. And what has often been deemed as a negative is actually a, one of our strongest assets. So keep rolling with that and know that you are correct in that thinking. It's a reason your instincts tell you to do certain things. It's because that's how we're supposed to be. But yeah, that's Liar. it. And uh, with that being said, man, welcome to the podcast. It's a show with three friends separated by distance, but we connected by brotherhood. And we have weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I'm one third of the partners, your boy Tiz, and I'm along with. Hey, it's the other third of the partners, the better one here. And um, I'm rolling up and I'm along with. <laughs> Dramatic pause. It's me, motherfuckers. Face. In the it's damn me. Place. It is. <laughs> Let me point something out. This here in the background, there ain't no goddamn flag either. <laughs> this right here. You gotta know. I, mother, was, I had a joke in my This, for this like motherfucker is an organizer. This is my wife's Let me be organizer. Right. Every color Let is a different day of the fucking week. So I don't want to hear shit by the goddamn hey. flags. No, none of that hey. shit. Ain't that shit. Cause you ain't a homophobe. Mm. So why like it don't even matter if it was a flag, why can't you represent for your gay people? Like your gay brothers and sisters out there. That ain't got shit to do with what you and your wife do. That just mean that you fuck with that, that you respect they shit. So like man, whatever it, it could be a fucking flag of Zamunda. God damn it. Whatever it is. I only fly flags and shit out the painting. You're a black man. Fuck that shit. It's yours. Whatever it is, it's yours. The world in the palm of your hand. You, Baby I got all that. Too. All problem, it. It's all good. But this right here, but this right here ain't no goddamn flag. 
Just let you, just, this ain't no motherfucking flag. And ain't no goddamn baby <laughs> waiting. My wife did my fucking way. Shit. That nigga got the goddamn but, audience. Baby wait on the pride flag. Hey. <laughs> not to walk into the not to walk into that one. That was a good one. That was a good one. I ain't seen that one before. I like that. I like that. I like it. And if you will do it, at least be creative. I like it. I like it. I like what you did there. I like what you did there. That was good. That was good. Good. That boy good. That boy good. <laughs> Bone in the collection plate. So, the first, up the this, first up this week. What the fuck? All right. First topic <laughs> up this week, Greg. So, just sit back thing and looking at the dynamic of things change on the wider scope of just different families and different shit on the internet. This conversation. Who is the head of the household in the new generation and new polls we have in 2022? Is it still a so-called man or is it all about who makes the most money? And following that, is it about the money or the substance and the structure that makes the leader of the household? Hmm. All right. Open this for Open for I, 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 I know who I think it is. All right, so I got two lines of thinking here, but they're going to coalesce and make sense if you if you hear what I'm saying. All right, so the the broader answer for me is the man is the head of the household because to me, in my worldview, men are, should be, and are still the kings of and have dominion over the world. I don't mean that in a oppressive sense. I mean that in a leadership sense, as in a, I am leading with the best interest of the things and people around me at hand, if that makes sense. Like truly not like dictatorship, but like leadership, right? So to me, the man is still the head of the household if he is a man, because I define man very, it's very specific characteristics. You have to be a protector, a provider. You have to be a police. You have to also be a psychotherapist. If you can fit all four of those roles for your house effectively, then you are fit to lead your house regardless of economic status in the house because the head of the household isn't a financial burden. It's a leadership burden. It's a, I am willing to make live with, ride or die on and correct the decisions that need to be made in order to make this house run in its most efficient manner for the parties that are involved. So that means not making it run well for me, but making it run well for your child, your children, your wife. If you have your elderly people, you got auntie or grandma living with you or mom, dukes living with you, then them too. Like you are making the best sound decisions for the household. And when those failures arise, you're taking responsibility and accountability to correct those decisions. You are also taking the full brunt of fight, like making sure those decisions happen. You may not be the financier, but you are like the executive producer of the career. You the person running the show, even if you might have 13 other associate producers that's putting in their little bread or got this going on, or you're the one making that. Hey, Y'all get together because I see that y'all gonna work together. Hey, you, your brother and your sister, since your sister got the got a license, y'all two ride here because that's gonna make the most sense to make sure mama can still get to work in this car and I can get over here for the you know what I'm saying? So it's like you conducting the show regardless of finances or what the resources are brought, because in a family or a household, the resources are all pooled. If you got roommates effectively what you are saying is you and that other person are pooling your resource to make sure that regardless of what happens your bills get paid so that you keep all utilities on so that you can both live a normal survivable lifestyle your rent gets paid or your mortgage is paid so that you can both have a continuous house hit like roof over your head and you are both going to make sure that food is in the house so that you don't you both don't starve that's a collective decision so even in that, like, no matter what the household is, you're making a collective decision. You just basically the executor or the 
facilitator of those pooled resources to make sure that the decisions made with those resources are the best to either grow those resources or make the household in its most efficient place. So I would say the man. But then here's the second part. It's whoever is most effective at that role because what you don't want is a fucked up head of household. It's just like a president. You don't want a president that don't know what the fuck they doing. You mm -hmm. don't want that. <clears throat> you don't want that. You don't want, some, you don't want a bush. A deer in the headlights ass motherfucker that's making decisions. They making decisions quick, but they, they have no intellectual or logical sound reasoning behind them. There's no logistical basis behind the next move. It's just oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? So like if the man is not the best person, then it should be the woman. If the man mm -hmm. and the woman are not the best people, it may need to be the teenager. Because you have situations where the man and the woman in the household that everything is in their name, they're both crackheads. And the 16-year-old mm. daughter or son is the one that's actually paying the bills on time, making sure the kids are at school on time, making sure the mother and father are even eating, and making sure that they get their medical care and all that. So, like, I think it's the person that's best deemed able to do all of those roles, but it should be the man. Because to me, the man should be like, there's a reason that you have a king or queen, queen mother. It's a reason that all of these positions have been kind of replicated throughout time, just with different names, emperor, empress. Like you have these different sections and different categories of leadership because there are people in society that are best able to lead. That's just what it is. There's somebody better than me at business, logistics, ra reasoning, rationale, and that person should be leading society, not me. Because although I could do it, it would not be the best for everybody. It would not be the most efficient. And at the, at the end of the day, for society to improve and progress, we want the most efficient leadership in all sectors because that's what's going to actually push us. That's why we have, that's why all systems fuck up in America. We don't have effective leadership in it. Capitalism in itself isn't bad. Socialism in itself isn't bad. Religion in itself isn't bad. Um, racial politics isn't in itself bad. It's the leadership. Education system isn't in itself bad. The reason all these things are failed systems is because the leadership of it is fucked up. You got good leadership in anything. You straight. And I, and I digress and I stop. I apologize for rambling. But that was a good damn topic. That and you pretty much oh, killed the did. actual answer. <clears throat> oh, um, I mean, he basically killed the the, the damn answer. Um, uh, I'll just reiterate after him. Also, I would like to put in since he said that we do need new le leadership out there. Padawan for president, twenty twenty four. Write me in. Write me in. No, nigga, no. <laughs> and I don't say that because I don't agree with some of your politics I say that because I truly believe that there is somebody who's out there better than all three of us better than any of our listeners that like there's that one that's like you are the person that's supposed to do this and I feel like anybody that gets in the way of that for glory or something is wrong like a Kanye is wrong, not because he wants to run for president, but because he doesn't want to run for president because he truly believes he's the best option. He wants to run for president because he wants to shame other people. You know. or he wants to get clout for it. Or, like, you see what I'm saying? Like, to me, like to do anything in leadership, you have to be like, if you have a pure heart, you can do it. That's all you need yep. to be a good leader. You have a pure heart and you have the skills to go with it. And that's like a one in a million thing. That's there's a reason that you have hierarchy. There's a reason that society be kind of organizes itself into like apex things. In the natural world, there's apex predators because when shit comes down to just bare basics, some things are just better than the other things. And it's not a bad thing. I think we look at better and worse as like these, oh no. 
No, if you run a race and you have 10 people, somebody will be the 10th person. That's just numbers. It's not bad. Just means that you weren't as good as those 10 people, but you may be better than the other million people that tried to run that, to make it to that heat. You see what I'm saying? So, like, there's going to be a natural selection in the world. So, like, if you got that, then let's keep getting the apex to the front. And I think what's fucked us up, we keep getting these. We, we're, we're not getting the apex. We're getting the <laughs> the bottom of the gene pool to run our, <laughs> our country and our world. And that's scary because they you can't have Kim Jong un running nothing or Kim Jong il running nothing. They not that smart, y'all. I don't mean no harm. You can't have a Putin running shit. They're conniving, yes. So they're intellectually based around like being sneaky, but they're good at that. But they're not good at like real, like everyday intellect. And that's the, the, the yeah. I, I'm I'm done. I'm sorry, y'all. I made y'all turn off the camera and shit. My bad, Pasquale. You, 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 you. I do this to you all the time. Oh. Hey! <laughs> hey! Yeah, What's good? Questions and stuff. Who was that? <laughs> that Lili? What? Yeah. What's up, <laughs> my nigga? <laughs> Needed the key and stuff. Pretty much, hey man, but tell her we popping the fuck out now. She she part of the family now. She had an interview on him. Man, she might well come on, say what's up. Shit, don't be rude. God damn it, we know my you. Well. No, nah, she got she uh, run damn right. She got run run and make some moves. Pretty much, but yeah, it up, partner. <laughs> but yeah, yeah you, yeah, you, yeah, pretty, yeah. you pretty much killed that. Like everything that you said about. um Basically, who's the head of the household traditionally and everything? I all I would say there is just like you said, there is times where there's exceptions to the rule, where um, evolution got to kick in, and somebody that's outside of who is normally the uh, the head of household has to just take on that role, pretty much, because the situational. Situational and environmental situations, pretty much. Oh, come on, Pat. Keep talking. Because guess what? You just preached right there. Because watch how this tie in. Boom. <coughs> Somebody got to do it, right? Mm. The shit may be fluid in a household. So it may mm -hmm. be three years where it's the man. And then for two years, it may have to be the woman because she's evolved to a place where now she has more knowledge on how to handle the bills. And then mm -hmm. in five more years, it may be the man again for another 10, 15, 20. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, it may fluctuate <clears throat> depending on who has the most knowledge and best resources and best situation to be able to facilitate the roles. But it's really just based on the roles that need to be done. At the end of the day, the house has to be protected. Mm -hmm. So just based around that has to be based around the person who has the best ability to do those, make those decisions. The house so, has to be provided for. So whoever has the most resources or the ability to use the resources in the best way. Because okay. my wife bring home the bacon, but I'm the decision maker, if that makes sense. When we decide if somebody going on a trip, if somebody going somewhere, if we about to take a plane or a train or a bus or a car, I'm the one make. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it depends on who's the... Just the ultimate decision maker. Like, like every time I make a decision, we good. So let me rock. But if you making the decisions and you good and I'm fucking up, then you rock. Please rock. Because now mm -hmm. I, I'm a detriment. Like, it's just whoever the asset is. You know what I mean? It, it's all guns mm -hmm. and butt. <laughs> true, true. Because uh, you know what? Uh, you... While you were talking, you answered the question I was about to ask anyway. Is it a, is it uh, depending because, you know, you have different roles and different um, let's say duties within the home, pretty much. So you pretty much answered it by saying whoever can cover the most of those duties or who can cover it the best. So because I was going to actually ask. No, no. See, dude, this mm -hmm. is the everyday shit. Everybody do that. Like me, mm -hmm. my my wife are all responsible for making sure the clothes get clean, making sure the dishes get washed, making sure 
like shit like that. What I mean by leadership is like the decision making. When it's time to figure out, hey, there's something a, a, a bill needs to get paid or added to the to rotation. Like say, hey, we want to add in this new thing. We want to do this new thing. Who's the person that decides finally, like, hey, yes, we going or no, nah, this don't make sense. So this is why we not going. We can go here and this that time. The person that does that, that's the head of household. It should be the man, but I leave room for outliers because, again, you might have two crackheads that are the parents and the kid may have to run it. You may have the woman that is better equipped to do that job, and if the man does it, the house is going to be in ruin, so he needs to let her run it. You see what I'm saying? Like I think leadership doesn't mean role You're reversal. able to do it. Yeah. Like, like if the king gets sick, he relinquishes power to the hand or to the queen or to the, the regent or whoever is the nakes in line in succession until he is better so that whoever's making the decision is making the sound decision, not somebody who in the middle of a feverish drink. You feel me? So, like, at the end of the day, like, leadership is a fluid position. When you're talking about the head of the household, it should be the man because that should be the most stable person in the house to, like, be that consistently. So, like, even though it may be fluid, like, when I look at my me and my wife relationship, right, we've been together 16 years total, eight years married, right? In that relationship, there's been three years where my wife was the head of the household because she was best able to and best in the position as far as knowledge. 13 of them years, though, I've been. So at the end of the day, I've been the most consistent, but that comes with being able to be. When I wasn't able to be, I was smart enough to know, hey, I'm going to relinquish the leadership, even though she still would come to me to make sure that her decision was going to be cool. You see what I'm saying? Like it, it, it's 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 like a teamwork thing. Like it's like the quarterback can mm -hmm. still on the last play, but he gonna check on to see if the with the receiver saw. Hey, running back, what you see? So everybody involved in the play is just the quarterback, the one that actually pulled the trigger. So when you talking about head of household, I think it's also a title that is much like a monarch. Like it's like. Yeah, I'm making the decision, but I still need to have that round table with the council to make sure that the decision I'm making is going to be best for all parties. Otherwise, I make a unilateral decision, and then that's where you get dictatorship. Now I'm just operating off of what I just think, and that can be dangerous. Yo, yo you these past conversations or whatever, I'm going to bring it up later, probably later on in my segment or whatever, but. I, I want I really want to put y'all up on that Rupert Modoc documentary because the things we're talking about secession, um, roles, who's going to take over, air, who's who chooses the air and everything, and basically uh, being an alpha male in the business world and stuff like that, or whatever. Yeah, that I, I just. If y'all can get HBO Max, y'all need to watch that. That shit's it, it, it's crazy. The conversations I bring to y'all, these are conversations that the power structure have. And I know that they have them, which is why I want to have them. Because I feel like the more that our people start to have these conversations, the better able we are able to, one, break down the power structure, but two, also figure out the things that they do that work that we can now use to help our power structure, if that makes sense. True. So you see, before you know, I go to break yeah, something, you gotta understand that shit. Like when when even in the Bible, watch this, watch this. Oh, come on, God. I hear you. I hear you. Watch this shit. I'm preaching tonight. Come on, come on, bourbon. Bourbon is working. And I'm not even a bourbon drinker. I'm a tequila man, but goddamn bourbon. All right. So watch this. I use honey bourbon backwards. Joshua in the Bible had to know that acoustics make vibration and enough vibration will shake a foundation to the point where the mortar will crack and the bricks Bars. will fall apart. Otherwise, he wouldn't have known to break the jaws, blow the horns, stomp around, yell at the same time. That's to make the most sound waves at the same time as possible in order to hit that motherfucking wall and start to crack the mortar. 
because back then the mortar was a lot weaker because they were using more primitive tools. So like, like, but but you got to think if I don't know that, mm -hmm. I can't break down that power. So like, I think us having these conversations is vital because you get, like, we should be challenging perspectives. Like, and even when I say stuff. <clears throat> I love it when one of y'all come in with something that's completely different or like, hey, nah, that's because it, it it continues our thinking. And I think that's what we miss it. Like to be what you asked about face to start this conversation, the head of the household, you have to be the best critical thinker in your house. Because that's what life is all about. It's all about making decisions, understanding the consequences and the repercussions of that decision that will reverberate far past that initial move. It's the point guard that can see the play 10 plays ahead and know that when I make this pass, it's going to lead to this deal. It's going to lead to that. It's going to lead to that. It's going to lead to that, which is going to set this up in the third quarter. It, it's the quarterback that knows, like, me continuing to throw this pass in the first quarter is going to make me in the fourth quarter when I throw this that down fade route, it's going to make their whole defense shut down because they've been key toward this the whole game. It's the it, it, it's that shit. You know what I mean? It's the, the best critical thinker wins the gig in any pack. The best wolf that's the best critical thinker is probably going to be the best fighter because he's going to best understand how to use his leverage to get up under the other wolf and sweep his ass off his feet and get his teeth sunk in. <clears throat> it's going to be the best moose because he's going to understand the best head angle to throw his head in and make sure his, his, his uh, <laughs> what you call moose antlers? I feel like they call something different, but whatever you call them, got yeah, that. Look. You you hook them up. They they gonna hold the best angle to hook them motherfuckers in to get the leverage to toss this motherfucker over. Like it, it's every every group in it's it's the sperm that knows the best angle and the quickest way to get my ass to this through this egg. While all yeah, y'all around in the circle trying to find the sweet spot, I'm gonna go right through this shit. And by the time y'all done found the sweet spot, I'm be the bit through this little tough piece. But it's because I know that that y'all fail like it's every living thing has it it's the tree that knows to put its roots this way because that's gonna give it the best chance to grow as opposed to all 10 other trees that put their roots that way to die it's that's all it is it's it's not when i tell you life is easy when you stop fucking around and making it complicated and you break it down to like the simplest form of what life is life is what we've always learned about in science class it's the cells, it's the protozoa, it's the it's the fungi, it's all of that shit. It's natural selection. Evolution is a real thing. The way shit chooses itself, the best shit will win out. The most efficient shit will win out. The best thinkers will win out. That's why they're still in power. Yo, that with you saying that right, I want y'all to really get look. All right, so I'm gonna go on my rant. This Murdoch is this Murdoch. Uh, family of influence, right? This shit, when you watch this, it will make you understand why media in general, social media, news, everything is the way it is right now. Like the TV shows, reality TV shows, because this dude, the programming. Yeah, exactly. And the moves that he makes, yo, the moves that he makes. Even though they're like at the end, at the detriment of humans, it's like it's an evil genius move on certain things. Like, um, for example, all right, one of his moves, this is not even evil genius moves or whatever. When he was first making Fox, right? It was uh, it was out of it was unheard of for someone to make a, a, a network out of the blue other than CBS, NBC, and ABC since the 50s, right? And that's in the 80s, right? So he went ahead, one, one by one, he acquired a whole bunch of like, just media companies other than something called Meta, something like, something, something like little small little cable companies, right? Put it together, then he buys uh, 20th Century Fox studio in Hollywood, right? He puts that together. Fox is still not doing what he's supposed to do. So in some cocky mamie scheme, right, he basically uh, paid the NFL 
like over the amount that he really should have so he can actually get some of the games or whatever and then with that it built fox and he was able to come out with the mother tv shows one one by one and then afterwards he built fox news and it's crazy that the way he built fox news because pretty much everybody he was mingling with in the 80s trump uh giuliani all them people on fox news is people that he was basically doing business with since the 80s basically or whatever and man y'all just gotta watch it yo it's like oh that one move that he did or whatever that like like changed the game as far as news newspaper media um he he wanted to do certain things so he got cool with reagan matter of fact his newspaper and his and fox is like the one of the main reasons why reagan got popular or whatever his main thing was not only controlling media but controlling being able to control politics because before he got to america he started off in australia he's australian and from there he started the first tabloid stuff so like you know instead of just saying news or whatever his motto was it can't be boring so you can see how just going off of on newspaper that the newspaper and the tabloid it can't be boring we got to just have some crazy stuff he's like the first one to say um let's write about this celebrity let's do this let's all right it let's take yeah let's um it was a situation where someone died and instead of one of the media people or whatever found their phone hacked into their phone and just started putting out stories about that person that had nothing to do with the death don't that sound familiar it's like fox news in general and this is in the 80s or whatever actually i think it actually started off in the 70s or whatnot and then in one move um he basically saw where technology was going um pretty much and a lot of the union rules that um a lot of union rules that was in the play was in the way of him doing certain things to expand his business so that's when he gets cool with Reagan and a lot of politicians. Reagan's passed a couple of things for him to like just bypass a lot of those rules. And then um then after that, what, what is it? Then then after that, he said he's gonna start a whole news newspaper called the London Post, right? Whole bunch of people start basically applying to the London Post or whatever he got a, a company and everything and then he said if you're going to be uh hired to the london post or whatever you got to follow these certain rules and stipulations so those people they went on strike right or, or whatever thinking they had the upper hand pretty much meanwhile he's he's putting in machinery that's basically replacing those people or, or, or whatever and it's basically this one machine could do what all those people could do so the only reason why and then the london post wasn't even a real post pretty much like he didn't even he ain't never actually put out anything through the london post it was just a plot to get people to apply or whatever so once they actually went on strike or whatever he started just sending out stuff like you're canned, you're canned, you're not going to because they didn't start the job or whatever. So it's not like he really hired them. So he basically just X'd that out that whole workforce and saved his his company billions of dollars or, or whatever. And and he basically transformed print media from there with at the expense of all those people's jobs pretty much he literally wanted he literally went in to get rid of unions and um to get rid of unions and that workforce so he can actually start the machinery because it would cut costs <laughs> and pretty much um and pretty much half of it you mute you muted to 
Can you remember to tell me that exact same story again on Wednesday of this week? That, yes. That gives me a perfect idea for my next podcast topic. That's you got is, HBO Max? I do. The first I have, episode. I have everything for at least a month more. I think all my if you get up at the if, end of December or in the middle of December, they they close. I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this documentary justice. Well, HBO with Max my ain't description. So I definitely got that. I got that to whenever uh my cousin. Oh yeah, because you. Yeah, because you got the um. You <laughs> watch uh. Oh, shit. You watch the House of the Dragon, so I know you got it. But oh, you don't yeah. watch that. Hey man, whenever the, whenever cousin stop playing, that's uh, that shit run out. So uh. Oh, dragon man. Shout out to Cuzzo. Long live Cuzzo. Who's my uh, who my son is actually with this evening. So God bless. Yep. But yo, just watch it. And then in that you talk about secession because he has children or whatever, and a lot of them in the field, and he's actually pitting his children together to be uh, against each other to see who's the best one to be the heir. Basically, now, who's the alpha within the children? Watch how we end this on, on on the same note that we started on, right? Before we go into the good and fuckery, right? The, it goes back to the head of the household, right? Exactly. We become Correct. better heads of the household when we begin to look at things exactly how he looked at. They're looking at succession. They're looking at what happens to the generation, not that I'm in, but the ones that come after me, and how do I affect that? And they're making plans based around that. The problem with a lot of our decision making in our community is we are very short sighted. We're very much so. I'm going to get everything I need now because I might not get this again, as opposed to. Mm -hmm. Let me get what I actually need now, not what I want now, but what I need now. Mm -hmm. We put everything else away because. If I do that, I'm actually building for the next generation. So then, then they have a, a jump on things, which makes the generation after them have a jump on things even more. And like you have to start that perpetual motion of each generation becoming better than the last one, because that's how every other group in the world, no matter what the race, culture or whatever it is, that's how people succeed. Every family every group, every culture, every nation that succeeds is because they think about the next step as opposed to just today. And a lot mm -hmm. of art become based around, let me get the chain today when I could have a house that will have my family set up with wealth going into the future. Because mm -hmm. now I have something that is already in his name that when he, that he can now build collateral against, he can build credit on, he can actually use as a source of passive income he can sell to make a nest egg for his first business. Like there are so many options that he now has that he wouldn't if I buy this chain. And I think that's the biggest thing. You just hit it on the head. Murdoch and their family and most in monarchies and every basically like highly successful group, the 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 Buffets, the DuPonts, the damn the the rock the the Rothschilds the the you know what I'm saying all of these families the, 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 the those groups that we all know and hear about they're successful not because they're necessarily so horrible it's just that they really do put the priority of their longevity of their bloodline or their culture or their group being there for the long haul paramount over everything else so they're willing mm -hmm. to make the hard Decisions that allow them longevity over immediate success. They're willing to play the long mm -hmm. game. And a lot of times we not. We ready to get the the microwave. Right now. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get some now, now, now. out of the oven, man. Low and slow. Most foods are cooked best. Low and slow. Yeah, and using microwaves is fucking horrible for you anyway, because if you stay around it too long, it's cancer you. Fuck, bro, Hamlet. But yeah, yeah. man, uh, I I got another topic that's gonna take us somewhere. Uh, I think face that was an amazing topic to start the podcast all with this week. Uh, cause it's now sprung. Uh, like that's gonna be one of them things. We're gonna come back to some of that 
for mm-hmm. several going for it further, I think. I think that was a really good good question, especially where we at in the world today with all of the gender politics and stuff. I I, I see where your head was at, face. Good shit. Good shit, my bro. That may even be some offline conversation that we end up having as just like the bro, you know what I'm saying? Like that's mm-hmm. just uh, that that got my juices flowing, pause. <laughs> My apologies for that. That was egregious. I apologize, everybody. Oh man, <laughs> that was horrible. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I didn't have to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but what I will go to. All right, so Pat, uh, we're gonna flip things a little bit. I'm gonna have my my topic last um i feel like going from serious to serious can be a bit much for our podcast you know and i i just feel like my goofy my goofy needs some time to exercise so that by the time i get to mine i can be more serious throughout the whole thing if that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, the bourbon the bourbon oh, is bourbon yeah, yeah, yeah. like it's kicking it's kicking in and um between that and the <laughs> and uh yeah, I, I uh, he almost forgot. You heard me. So uh let's get right off into it, man. This is episode 106. This is the second episode of season three of the motherfucking yep. pod. Yeah. Episode yeah. one and six in park. Yo, it was a lot of fuckery this week for these past couple of weeks, bro. I'm right. Oh, DeMarco. DeMarco. All right. I'm going to start off with some nerd shit. Um, the good is, right, James Gunn, one of my favorite directors, uh, directed Guardians of the, Gal- the Galaxy movie series. Uh, hmm? Is that Ragnarok? No, that's Taiko Waititi. That's my nigga. Waititi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, James Gunn, the Guardian of the Galaxy, and Suicide Squad, and Peacemaker. Hold on, is he second? He's second Suicide Squad. Yeah, he's second Suicide Squad. Well, second and, Suicide Squad. Okay, okay. And, Polka dot, uh, my Guardians, of the, Guardians of the Galaxy one, two, and the three. You know, the three's about to come out. Pretty much, respect, the trailers respect, out now. Respect to Adam Warlock. Yep, I, um, I fucks with James Gunn. Pretty much, he he has that good mix of wacky, serious action or whatever that fits well with comic books to me. You know what I like before? He's good at taking a movie, right? And he's mm-hmm. good at out character arcs for everybody as opposed to having just lead have their character arc for us. Like he's good at making you kind of go on a journey with all of the people that you encounter mm-hmm. to that movie you really feel like you like become a part of the world as a part of just the main characters or the protagonist point of view you you've kind of become a part of just this whole world you know what I mean yeah that- yeah no exactly he got this he's real good at putting um the slice of life type of humor. Uh, it's like a, that's a term they use in like literature, like where you have, all right, like you have like an action cartoon, right? Or whatever. And then they just have like maybe an episode where it's a cool episode, but they're just doing regular human shit. Like you see Batman just doing regular human shit like, or, or whatever. Yeah, like sip, simple shit like that. Spider Man is good for that because he's always yes. broke as fuck <laughs> in general and you know, trying to I like pay rent and save the world. I just need to take this picture though in the middle of battling and getting my head ripped off by the reptile. Let me just take this picture one time. Okay. The I just guy. got electrocuted by um, Electro and I got to swing across um, five barrels to get to Mary Jane's play. <laughs> right. <laughs> shit like that. So yeah, James Gunn is real is real good at making superheroes human, so to speak. Yeah, very much so. Right. Agree. So 
the good news is James Gunn is now officially basically the Kevin Feige of the DC Cinematic Universe. So that means it. we finally going to have it. a cohesive. I hate it. I hate universe. it. I hate it. I hmm? hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Why you hate it? I'm not a DC fan. Mm -hmm. I'm very much Team Marvel if if we have to go there. And the fact that we would be losing one of the top two directors in our Marvel stable that make things like. I'm cool with if they're going to just let Taiko Waititi just direct all of the Marvel movies, cool. It's going to have the all same tone. It's going to make more sense to me, cool. But if we're losing James Gunn, to me, he's the only other one that made movies that fit with what Waititi was doing so that things felt cohesive. If you're telling what? me we're about to bring in another guy, I don't want another Josh Whedon. I don't want another whoever that you're thinking about no, bringing Josh- like, Josh Whedon ain't gonna never get chosen for anything. I don't want to lose a soldier that we got to Aquaman. Mm-hmm. And fuck that. I would, no, fuck I'm gonna that. tell you, you want, let Zack was, Snyder do that. I heard Spike Lee gonna make the next Marvel movie. Oh, shit. here we go. Here we go. Um, goddamn. Um, well, yeah, here's the thing. Oh, uh, what, what you better be joking. I think he's joking because I ain't heard nothing of the such. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga has got a serious face. Oh, I don't think I don't think like you Spike joke. You joking, right? Yeah, of he's course. joking. Of course. Yeah. I, I don't see Spike Lee making a, a, a hey, superhero like, movie. I don't want no goddamn Crooklyn version of no Marvel <laughs> movie. <laughs> mm. oh. I'm good on that. Good on no. all. I don't need no. your rap. I don't, I don't need no better blues version. I don't need none of that shit. I'm straight. No mm. movies as good as their movies. I don't, I don't oh, want. No we got movie. Ryan Coogler, so we good. Yeah. <laughs> now, 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 this is what I will say. If you let Ryan Coogler handle all of the, should I say, elemental. Um, Marvel characters, right? Uh-huh. You get like OITD, all the cosmics. Let him to even take over uh, Captain and Miss Marvel. Let him take over uh-huh. those. And then you bring in whoever you got new to do like all of the domestics, like the uh-huh. the Moon Knights and the Blades and shit. The ground uh-huh. that's about to kick ass there. The I'll city, say- I like the city I mean, I level character. But if you losing James Gunn and we just nah, it's 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 That's Disney's fault. Loss. It's Disney, it's but Disney fault though. Galaxy, even though they are one of the more obscure Marvel characters in general, they are definitely one of the larger franchises for the Marvel MCU, and they tie a lot of the different areas of the storylines together for everything like because they are so out there and their storylines can be so gigantic they tie a lot of things they like they make the celestials work with the rest of the mcu they make certain things about captain marvel make more sense they make the secret wars that's coming up make more like you see what i'm saying like they kind of they, yeah. they they it, become the, the the ligaments to the to the thing. Like I feel like what they're gonna end up doing is how say I think on the cosmic side when they introduce Fantastic Four, they're gonna take over that boy. But before I because before I forget, the reason why like it, I feel like it's Disney fault because James Gunn got hit got canceled one time. They brought up some old tweet that he said a long time ago. And then majority of the people like that worked with James Gunn defended him. But Disney was like quick to be like, nah, nah, we 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 not fucking with or whatever. But so I think James Gunn just came to a conclusion that all right, I'm gonna mm-hmm. finish the Guardians of the Galaxy and then I'm gonna find someone else to work with. And then DC was in dire need of leadership. Dire need of leadership. So I think as far, can you hear me? Um, 
Oh, now nah, now I can. I said, when was this? Uh, this was about two years ago. I'm actually probably more than that. It was basically around the time Guardians Two came out. Either, oh. yeah, around Guardians Two, and um, yeah, Disney was like quick to be to separate themselves, and then James because they thought James was going to go down, but everybody was defending them. So um, they pretty much came back to agreement. Long story short, he's going to finish Guardians, the Guardians of the Galaxy series pretty much. And I think it's really going to end with the bang. I like all the actors up there or whatever. One of the the villain is an actor, um, Chuck Woody Awuji. He's going to play the the main villain, the high evolutionary, and he was actually on um, Peacemaker or whatever as a character. And um, James Gunn, actually, he's a Chuck Woody Awuji, he's like African or whatever. And one of the one of the extra racy comic book fans was like, why did you race bend the high evolutionary, which I feel is stupid anyway, because they're comic book characters and you never see the how evolutionary's face is always in a mask. You don't know what race he is pretty much. But well, that's what we call James him. Gunn you know, you know, but James Gunn defended him saying like Chuck Woody Awuji is one of the greatest actors what, like basically the best of the best actors there is and I'm going to work with the best of the best actors. So he shut that shit down. What is that nigga name again? Chuck Woody Awuji. That's how he say it. That's so happy One more to time. Have that he can say and say it fluently. He, he just no, 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 it. no. I yeah. practice. Woody and you know Chuck Woody Awuji because you know Chuck Woody Awuji. And then Chuck Woody Awuji went over here because Chuck Woody Awuji went over there. Chuck <laughs> I, I still could be saying it wrong, but if y'all remember my my last that intergalactic. <laughs> Um, episode when I was talking about the um, when I was talking about the uh, all the movies that was coming out from Marvel over mm-hmm. the weekend, they brought him up there. So I definitely had practice of saying his name and hearing somebody else saying his name before I got to this point. So yeah, it, it's, I had, I had some practice. What, but um, what do you want? But yeah, basically. Nigga, you throwing me off. <laughs> oh, fireballs. What do you want? What? 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 <laughs> that nigga's crazy. But that bird. On it, what it's thing. The fuckery on on what Tiz says is Marvel's losing James Gunn, but I think on a. James Gunn is good at getting characters you never heard of or you didn't like and making you like them. And I like that. If you can make me like if you can make me like freaking Superman or Plastic Man or some random stupid character from DC. No way. I, I will I will give you I mean he did it with I wasn't expecting um, Guardians of the Galaxy to hit I think I was expecting me to like it, but I didn't expect it to hit worldwide like that it should because be it's so random or whatever. But hey, and then the other fuckery about it is that a lot of the movies that I thought they were going to actually go through with that I kind of wanted to see, they X that shit because they was going to do a Batman Beyond where uh, Michael Keaton was going to play the old old Batman pretty much, and in, in a futuristic Gotham. And I was like, I want to see that shit. But they basically canceled that and were um, Wonder Woman 3, shit, but I don't think nobody movie cared movie about movie that movie. shit either. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. But, yeah, that's all my nerd talk. Um, pretty much for that. Um, next fuckery. <laughs> what not. All right. Singer, um... 26 year old singer Summer Walker or whatever. I've heard some of her stuff. She got she got some good songs and whatnot. But um she's, she's receiving yeah, she was a stripper. I bet I keep forgetting that. But Ed, she could sing. <laughs> she could yeah. sing. 
But um, auto tune is backlash. A you said what? Auto tune is a hell of a thing. Also, a hell of a drug, especially for around them two thousand early two thousands to now. This nigga in this burger. Plug walk. <laughs> All right, um, but yeah, she's receiving backlash because she's offering two thousand a month for a uh, assistant, preferably white or gay, and they got to know how to fix stuff and have their own car. So Twitter, a yeah, two thousand a month, a month, not every two weeks, a month. All right, we gonna talk for real. Hold, wait a minute, two thousand a month? What the fuck, somebody gonna do with that? Exactly. What, what, in America, outside of Mississippi, are you living on two thousand a month? Who you what, tell me? That's what? telling you two things, yeah. right there. To, and to that's be a, two things. That, that runs any type of a business, that means you are needed to be on call at least sixteen to seventeen hours a day at the, at, at minimum. It's a paid insurance. She can't afford to hire that motherfucker. And the motherfucker she has, she ain't gonna give two shits about that motherfucker. Who she has. That's what? 1300 1500 if you got it. I mean, 1500 if you just tax it's 1300 if you got insurance with it. And then you, st- and then so that's, that's your rent or your mortgage. And then what? What else are you paying? Because if you live in Atlanta, you ain't paying shit else. That's that's it. And then you go to any of those other metropolitan areas. And dry, and no water, and no heat, and no nothing else. But you're going to be in there. It's going to be like a basically a brick tent. I got a question for you. If we, <laughs> If we, as black people, is saying this, what makes her think that she's going to find a white male or a gay no, man. No, 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 no. What you got to understand, no. Privilege that will actually go along. Privilege mm-hmm. continue. Oh. A white male, fresh out of college or in the middle of college, will do that shit for the ground, for the experience of it. Them niggas go backpacking in Peru and shit and be poor as fuck for two years with their mama having a trust fund for them just because they want to see what it's like to go experience nature. See what the world is like. See what the people are Mm. like outside of my life. So like they do weird shit like that. So that doesn't surprise me. What surprises me is is that she is being that damn cheap. Like do you know the cost of living across the world? Like I feel you. Yeah. There are people who would do it just to get close to you, but that's still taking advantage. Like if but, I'm gonna this, this give you at least four grand a month, so at least you make an a livable wage. You feel this, me? Like this, at least start you off there. Get you, get, get this, you close to this. This this the uh st- that's the other stipulation though. I don't know, but it's not really a stipulation, but she said. I don't care if you a fan of mine. She don't really want like a fan of hers. She don't care if y'all don't even know who she is or her music. I, she just wants somebody to work. Not for two grand, I ain't. Two <clears> grand. Exactly. Two weeks. I, I, I got you. <clears throat> two grand a month. You can kiss my ass later. <clears throat> don't mean no harm. Like, I want y'all to think about what that is out here, people. That's $24,000 a year. Pre-tax. That's pre-tax. That is working at the grocery store as a bagger when you are 16. Suck my pre-tax. You hear what I'm saying? Like, that is, that's, that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a job. That's when a you fast food job. And you work your part-time. That is not. Is that even minimum wage? I would say minimum wage. What is minimum wage now? It's supposed to be fifteen dollars, ain't it? In some places, some places it's still seven something. Yeah. Well, okay, seven, seven something. or eight. So. All right. So you got seven or eight. If you work full time, I'm gonna just give it full time because that's what she asking, right? So seven or eight times forty. Okay. So we looking at about. Okay. No, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Minimum wage, if you're talking like seven, eight dollars, then you look at it like maybe half to close to two thirds of that. But if you're talking about fifteen dollars, that is over minimum wage. About, then you way past what you're talking about paying. Mm-hmm. I know that for a fact. That yeah, yeah. You, you, that now. So like it, it's somewhere in the nine uh, nine to ten dollars an hour range that she talking about paying. But what I'm saying is for a person that's coming out of college or the age range that would be the optimal person that would do this, because a person that's established or that has a family or that's lived long enough to kind of experience other jobs is not gonna go for this because of the amount mm-hmm. of work talking about you're talking about not only just working but having to travel with her and be broke so that means you're away Mm -hmm. from the the, the little shit you do got and you still got to maintain that while being broke on the road with her god damn no i'm good no the other thing about it is summer walker she just she do things and say things sometimes that make me feel like all right you you are dumb not living in reality. Not just that you dumb as fuck, but you don't live in reality. Like you, you want real, you want reality to cater to you or some shit like that. Like and it, it ain't even on that part. It's just like she, she like at her shows or stuff like that. Like she. She's real snooty to her fans sometimes because she says she's an introvert. But no, it's because she's a stripper. You a sh- but you a stripper. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. like, yeah. yeah don't want that not even. I can't say that because you could be introverted and a stripper and at the same time. But at mm-hmm. um, like is. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she just be doing stuff sometimes. Well, not doing stuff. She just be saying stuff sometimes, man. It just be like, yeah, I don't think you get certain things. Not that you're stupid. I just don't think you get certain things about reality. But she is 26. So she's still learning <clears throat> pretty much. Um, So from that, I'm going to go into music. More music. More music. Since we in um talking about a singer oh, i'm gonna we're gonna talk about another singer fuckery r kelly oh man. r kelly released an album from jail called i admit it no he did <laughs> oh, shit god oh. shit oh. Why, why, why why not i admit it who are you oj <laughs> in this house or some shit like that and then gave the blow by blow <laughs> like what is what's happening with the yo this is how this is what's wrong with the black community what studios in jail man no. that's what I want to know and how good is the quality watch, watch this this is why we are how we are we will not hold him accountable the same way we will not hold the white power structure accountable. But who we who will hold accountable is somebody like Kanye. Nigga yeah, won't buy you true. but we'll bump bump and grind to the death of him. And this nigga talking about he admitted. God damn it, I quit. Well well the one <laughs> the, the one system that's uh keep actually holding him account accountable pretty much. Is all the streaming platform because as soon as he uploaded it up there, um, Apple, Spotify, and I think a, a majority of them now basically dropped that shit off their platform. So you can't find it on their platform. You may be able to find it on the internet, but you're not going to find it on that platform. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I hope not because he don't deserve to be. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I, I and like since- when, when a preponderance of evidence has been built against you, that you are a disgusting human being, you should lose societal privileges. Like back mm-hmm. in the day, 
they used to exile folk from the village when they was a harm to the a detriment to the village. When you become a detriment to the village, you should be exiled. You should be excommunicated. We should no longer have to hear from you in any form or fashion. You should cease to exist in the minds and brains of all those in our society. You should become be gone. A, a muted memory. You should become like the Peter Parker spell. We no longer know that you were there. Your pictures are blurred. You are no longer a factor. You're men in black. You are the weakest link. Goodbye. Thumbprint gone. We should start doing that again. What, weakest link? No, exile the motherfucker. I think so. And make it send them to the middle of the desert. Drop them off in the middle of the desert. Send your ass out by torchlight. Walk your ass out to the well, end. I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Good day. Matter of fact, uh, since we're talking about exile and stuff, well, matter of fact, let, let me go through a couple of people that, that we should probably put on exile. One is um on the Yay Report, since you brought up oh. Yay. <laughs> Still oh. on music. I'm, a, brought up I'm gonna make this short. I'm I'm gonna uh make this short and quick. Yeah, it's much. like all my year reports. All my year reports are just gonna be short and quick because he he doesn't need that much energy from me anyway. But um, basically, Kanye, the nigga that don't read books, uh, and says he likes Hitler, and That's can still can, mm-hmm, um, he can still make great beats, um. <laughs> Because he made a song, he made a song over the sample of Donny Hathaway. Someday we'll all be free. Y'all can remember that from Jay Z's four 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 album. This nigga sticks around. He keep making a damn song, and then people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this is the thing: the beat is great. I I don't want to hear Kanye on shit. Kanye, just sell your beats. I don't want to hear shit. Up there, like I listened to it just to see what he did with it, and let me tell you, with that sample, I think he kind of did it to be petty, like because he took that Jay Z sample and then he flipped it, pretty much, because you know he wasn't on that album, and then he flipped the fuck out that sample. Like that sample is great, too great for him to be <laughs> rapping on it, <laughs> too too freaking great to for him to be rapping on it, seriously. But yeah, that's the end of the A report because fuck that nigga. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, you got to read about the song now. You got it. damn it. Some man. now, no, I, I no, nah, he put Defcon three. He was talking about all that anti-Semitic shit on that shit too that he was talking about oh. there, man. Now he's he's not saying more of it. He's just saying what he went through when he said that shit, pretty much. But. I don't really- I just maybe I'll just look up the instrument. Yeah, the Jay-Z, see if you can do that. Hmm? The Jay Z rap? No, Jay Z. No, Jay Z don't rap on it. Yeah, he, I'll just he, look I, yeah. Um, next person we could put on exile. The next thing that um we could just get rid of um pretty much, and proudly the state of Georgia has also got rid of him. Herschel Walker. Good. Her- Herschel-, Herschel Walker lost the Senate race. And Herschel Walker is also- Ain't they entertaining? Did y'all know where Walker could beat up a vampire? <laughs> Did you also know that Herschel Walker is the first nigga to ever admit he's a coon and be proud of it? Yes, I saw a video where I said, well, uh, uh, I heard that they call me a coon, but what they don't realize is that coons are one of the most resourceful animals in the forest, or some shit like that. He's matter of fact, I said that I said that way more intelligent than he actually said it. He said it in the most ignorant of Sambo faction. Yeah, because as intelligent as you said it, it sounds dumb as shit to me. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's what I'm so saying. Like you, cool, nigga. you start comparing yourself to a fucking a rodent that eat out trash cans, nigga. A freaking trash panda. Trash panda. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, what, that's what you do. All right. All right, my nigga. Uh, and I mean but, my nigger. 
Mm-hmm. All right, man. But, uh, about, yeah, but that shit hurts. Me. You know what? Man, get, that's that story, right. Man, out. Nigga, a fast as shit. It ain't run no damn way up until the injury bank. Hey, sorry, son of a bitch. He Go ran ahead. for office. He, he ran for office. <laughs> nigga awesome. been lying about his life. <laughs> yeah, a thousand pushes and a thousand sit-ups. Nigga, no, you don't. Your fucking ass would be stiff as a board. You wouldn't be able to fucking walk. You can barely say a thousand words per <laughs> You can barely type a thousand you words. Can't to, the count to, a thousand to know what if you was a g- nigga. This shit get hazy for your ass around about 250. 253, 259, 7 million, 3, 999, 990, 10, 990, 11. We have the meat. You're a dumb bastard. But yeah, that's one nigga that can go into exile. He's a I, yes, you know very, what? Here we go. Unbelievably simple. I, I, like, won't I can't believe it. You know what? This is what it is, yo. The world is not split into it's not split into those who have and have not. It's not split into those who are black or white. It's not split into Jews or Gentiles or Whatever else. You know what it's split in the dumbest and the rest of us. Mm-hmm. It all boils down to dumbest and the rest of us. Because that's what happens. Dummies do shit and then the rest of us be looking around like, what the fuck are they doing? What is this? Who agreed what? to this? What the Who allowed fuck? this? Who made we this? Gotta clean up that shit. Why is that happening? What is they doing? Hey, hey! And as soon as we start Nigga, focusing on dummy and start cleaning up their shit, another dummy over here start doing some shit, and then we'd be like, "What the fuck?" And we just end up in a perpetual state of what the fuck. So you got a bunch of people Nigga. going around, like, what the fuck? And then the doing the shit like, which he don't George. You dumb fuck. I'm a coon. You stupid some bitch. I got man, you know what? To South Carolina with you. <laughs> don't run. Don't run. No, don't run. Don't you run, you fast motherfucker. Nope. 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 No. Nope, nope. Especially don't run for office over again. Make sure I got him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, done with I think you, you missed. I, am I think you missed you. one of his tooth, one of his teeth. Nope. Tooth. <laughs> and uh, a a a yay and aura. <clears throat> You know what? You know, you know what it is? Those gunshots and us talking about exile is the perfect segue to the end of the fuckery, sir. Let's because get away. now that we put these niggas in exile, we got somebody coming out of exile. And Brittany Griner is finally I'm coming home. And they going gorillas. Okay, I'm sorry. Big ass light skin gorilla. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, my bad. No, Speaking no. of gorillas, you know the new Transformer trailer is out, and they got Why Optimus Prime. Get me canceled on some bullshit. <laughs> what the fuck, nigga? No, I did not do that. You know no. Donkey Kong is in the new Super Mario movie. You know what I'm saying? And you know they got no, Optimus no, Prime no, on no. the new Transformer movie I'll, and shit. Been the niggas in exile. To the niggas in Paris, and I was saying, you know, like niggas in Paris, and they go on gorilla. Oh, I thought saying, you call her a big light skinned gorilla. Well, Paris no, gonna be praying no, for me. No, no, at least no, off wife no, to the no, ankle. No, 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 no. no <laughs> you know, Paris will be praying for me. My <laughs> bad. <laughs> well, Harry, but no, 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 no. 
no, no, no. That's no, my no. fault. That's my bus. It's my <laughs> bitch. No, 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 no. But yeah, uh, Brittany Griner is on her way back, and um, that's the good. Ooh. 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 The, the fuck, the fuckery. Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> this nigga is making good. Oh, are you making Ooh. grinder calls? Uh, I was actually uh doing an Mbaku impression, but uh, <laughs> my bad. I actually, that I was like the bourbon is that I want some of that bourbon. <laughs> I don't even drink like that, but I really want one of them bourbons. You know, like. You know, <laughs> Hey yo, when I tell you this is the best shit, when I tell you like so uh, hopefully well, I, I don't know, but as a part of my 40th birthday, this is one of the things I want to do. I want to get all the fellas together. We gotta do this. We gotta get some cigars and we gotta do this class thing. It, it was the dopest experience ever. The nigga teach you about like the history of these bourbons that you drink. He teach you how to drink bourbon properly. You're getting drunk all bourbon, obviously, but then they teach you how to make certain cocktails and how certain mixtures go together and you make your own cocktail to tell your own story and shit. It's really, it's a really dope experience. So, uh, yeah, cool. but you get fucked up while you're doing it. And then, like, it's really dope to do with people that you fuck with because along the way, like, you know what I'm saying, you be talking shit and then, you know, obviously the vibe get going. He got music going in the back of the shit. It's a whole vibe. It's a whole thing. But yeah, a whole it real, ambiance. Yeah, it was a real, it was a real cool grown up ass getting drunk. Bashing the ambiance. It, it was, yeah. it was hella, hella dope. Um, Bashing. I got a, uh, I'm gonna get his uh, IG and his information from uh, the wifey, and uh, we gonna, we gonna put that up as a black business. <clears throat> week. Uh, Do that. Shit. Gotcha. Do gotcha. that. And I got a couple of black like, dude. He walking in his purpose. When I tell you, like. Even if you don't like bourbon, like the experience is really just dope. Like you learn hella shit. Dude, that shit. It's just a real good vibe, man. I, I wish I had a, uh, been in the sound mind enough to actually record something, but yeah, y'all, y'all blame that. <laughs> not the heart. I was fucked up. On the uh, 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 alcohol. Copyright. Yeah. On the juice. Oh, Cause y'all know I don't drink the heavy shit. You know, usually I be going off a beer or something, you know, but uh, this, yeah. uh, he, Woo, and I, I never drank bourbon, so like for me, you know, it's always it was vodka for years, and then it was switched to tequila, and then that was, those were like the only two liquors I really ever got into. So like the bourbon, I, the dark shit is very foreign to me. Like the yeah, couple of one in this. any 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 uh dark, it was cognac, and it uh one time I yeah. ended up up one time I ended up fighting. Yeah, yeah, both time it just didn't end up well. So I just realized at a long at an early age, like you know what, dark shit. I love my black people and I love my melanated women, but um, melanated drinks are not necessarily for me. Like I don't even fuck with coke that hard, you know. It's right. So, what? Uh, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, the I, the I, opposite of Pepsi. He talking about Coca Cola to soda. How about jumping in the phone? I don't remember Crystal Pepsi. Yeah. yeah. I used to yeah, like I that. that. I was one of those. Yeah, that like blue that. Pepsi. Drinks. Now, now, people, I prefer my my my, my brown folk, but that shit was nasty as a bit. Oh man, before I forget, <laughs> before I forget. I got I gotta tell you the fuck part of the Britney Grinder thing. Mm -hmm. The trade-off. For, uh, to get Britney Grider back, Russia want the Merchant of Death. That's his. That's his, what he's known as. His real name is Victor. Oh, and so I want to try this Anatolovic <laughs> Bout or whatever. But he that is like Victor Anaconda Bite. That is <laughs> Victor. Well, Victor Bout. Victor is Victor. like a that nigga Vic. Big Vic. Well, Vic's vapor rub. This dude is known as the Merchant of Death. That's as he's a Russian. I think he's a like Russian a arms dealer. Video game. The Merchant of Death. But he's like he's a um he's an arms dealer, 
an entrepreneur, a former Soviet military translator. He used like multiple companies to smuggle weapons and to collapse oh, the Soviet was a Union. On Call of Duty. Yeah, he's uh, the Soviet Union, Eastern yeah, Europe, fuck? Africa. Matter of fact, you know all that, um, like the corrupt countries in Africa and stuff like that. He sold guns to all of them to the point that the kids, not even kids no more, they just train soldiers. And he's one of the people that actually train them to think that way. Mm. Victor Bout, the merchant of death. Mm. Or whatever. And they finally, he's, it's one of those things that I, I'm pretty sure it's a documentary about. Now I'm probably going to look up about, about this dude because he so, they he's serious or whatever. So like, it's almost like on the low, you traded in Brittany Griner for one of the worst supervillains in the modern era, pretty much. Did we make the trade officially? <laughs> no, she has, she's coming home. She's on her way home now. She's not in Russia. Oh. Yeah. And that nigga's on the way back to Russia. Well, fuck that nigga. Let them deal with that shit while they at war. In the middle of war, yeah. That's what they need. That's what they want them. Hey, look, mm -hmm. the more killers we can get the fuck away from us, I say great. Because I believe they offered the same trade yeah. earlier hey. in the season. But, and well, they neglected are they, are they to their grade. Our, are they willing to take Aura and Ye? Uh, all I'm saying, <laughs> I don't think anybody's willing to take them to. Can we but, get Aura to the gulag? All I'm saying is this can Victor we, Bout dude is. This dude is the Rupert Murdoch of guns and armaments, and we gave him to Russia. Sir, so, I like, mean, they had war great. It's a long time ago. I'm not worried about Russia. Them niggas struggling with true. Ukraine. That's true. But, I mean, that's probably why they brought him over so they can get him some advice on the on the shit that they have. Because I'm pretty sure they they sound like they got the great value military right now. Russia <laughs> is big as shit with nothing. <clears throat> you know what Russia is? Snow. No, Dakota. You remember when you was growing up, right? Mm -hmm. you had the kids in the neighborhood. You had that one kid. He could. He could fight real good, and he had a big yard, but it won't that many people trying to play in his yard. He was always angry. Rush of that kid. Nigga, house big as shit. Yard big as hell. But because he's so angry, don't nobody want to fuck with him. So it ain't but a few of ain't but a few of them over there. And that's the thing. Russia big as hell. They got all of Siberia. Them niggas reach all the way down near the channel. And the part of it that's populated most of Russia. Because it's cold. That their, their weather is angry. You can't be that damn angry and be prosperous and shit. Man, have you seen their written language? What are you gonna think? You're just mad. Their written language you... look mad. Everything looks aggressive and, and angry and pointy. Yeah. And cold. I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. Ah, huh. Them and Germany are two of the angriest places. That's why they keep fucking up. You can't win when you all sound like Taz. Sound just like Taz. And look at Taz. He always end up fucking up. Every everything that it talks like that fucks up. Daffy Duck. Sylvester. Get out of here. Russia, Germany, Japan, North Korea. So it's a whole Johnny Bravo. A whole bunch of aggressive ass. You sound, like, <laughs> you sound just like Johnny Bravo. Like you ain't <laughs> Nigga, shut up. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck out of here. I'm about tired of Tasmanian damn dummies trying to assert they are. Shut up. Make a sentence. Bit. A, a coherent damn phrase. Why your letters look mean? 
Everybody else let us look all flowy and happy. They glad to be there. They want to talk to other people and communicate. Yo, yo, let us look like they just shutting off every each, each letter look like his own little house. Like get away from me. I live in here. Yeah. And they got long I'm names like, too. It's, and it's, they, have, they have long names, really long spelt out names with multiple right. syllables. Not as long as like um names Indian. They just be they be long on paper because they got them aggressive ass letters. Them letters don't want to hang with each other, so it take hella long to make one sound. Take thirteen like, letters. Ah, people from here. India's names are long, <laughs> but they got, like, <laughs> they got like a rhythm to their name. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> and I know that this sure. sound. I don't know what what, what the word is. is Xeno races. Xeno one of them things. But guess what? Blah 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 to you too. That's what you sound like to me. <laughs> you mad at me? Fuck out of here. Especially after <laughs> drinking all that bourbon. That's probably how a lot of people sound. <laughs> That's really what it is. It's the bourbon. Blah blah blah. Because mm-hmm. I don't like when you mm-hmm. get too drunk and then they start going blah blah blah. Like I still want you to make a point at some point. Like that's why I don't talk when I'm drunk. That- don't leave me on that last word to just get real long. Ah, we was going to. Uh, 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 n- nigga, what? Where, where the rest of it at? Finish. And this is coming from somebody who used to leave Pat and Face and the rest of the crew on that long word. A many a night. As I said, <laughs> And slept as everyone else went into the nice warm house. And my dumb ass slept in the fucking passenger seat. Probably on my back fucked up now. Too many nights drunk, sleeping in cramped up spaces just because I'm too drunk to move and everybody else done went on by day evening. <laughs> my dumb ass sitting in the, uh, 40 degrees outside. I'm still out in the car. Everybody else all toasty in the bed. I should be in mine and I'm sitting in the damn car. Looking stupid. Boy, that's how I lost my fucking front. Never forget that shit. Nigga, oh, oh shit, I remember that. Sleeping in a car. To this day, could not tell you where in that car it is because we searched that car. To this day. The front's just gone. I probably spit them shits out the window and stomped on them and everything <clears throat> with a piece of foil by the morning. To this day. To this day. No idea what them shits were, but them some hard ass fronts though. To this day, they want some of the coolest fucking fronts that you can get for 60 bucks. Solid gold with the diamond cuts. The fangs cut out. So them shits just look like straight fang. Oh man, boy, I was fucking shit shitting on niggas for a minute. I still want fang. What team carried the match to chain in the ring, boy? I was that nigga for a, a little, little second. I was all right. <laughs> you feel me? What the fuck his face to? Where he go? I I'm just, just texted to see if <clears throat> but it's all because watch me ramp. Pat, can you hear me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I you can hear you. Can... Okay, cool. Cool. All right. So, Pat can hear me. So, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I ain't going to even waste no more time then. Uh, I'm going to go ahead into my topic of the night. Uh, I hope that face can make it back in time to uh, catch this because I really would love to hear his perspective on it. Uh, I feel like it would be very entertaining and actually enlightening. But, uh, so, Pat, this is. Basically, um, I was watching Alba and Preach. Uh, I think you're familiar with them. I'm not sure faces yes. that are really familiar with the platform, but basically, they have a lot of conversations on uh, social politics. They have a lot of conversations on gender politics, um, relationship norms, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But they're very good at like sparking other conversations. Now, mm-hmm. they had a clip they did a while back like when the shorts first started on YouTube and TikTok first started kind of getting big um, and it ended up getting their page fame. This 
clip has since went viral. And they had a conversation about the clip. The conversation about the clip wasn't as important to me as what it made my brain go to as far as the conversation that the clip kind of sparked. And I wanted to ask, is having a preference the same as discrimination? Does who you choose to be with, does it make you a phobe, an ist, or a shamer? So I'm going to play this clip, um, and then I'm going to kind of go into some of the questions I had and let you kind of flow on. Mm -hmm. So uh, here we go. You guys a clip that got TikTok so upset. And you guys tell me what you think. Oh, okay, so this is the TikTok, okay? And I want you guys to hear this. Would you date a trans person? No. no. Honestly? Think about it for a second. No. no. Okay, got your answer? No. no. I didn't need a second. Thank you. Well, if you said no, I'm sorry, but that's pretty discriminatory. I'm done. <laughs> Where are you going? There's no discrimination in what I said. I wouldn't date a person that has a penis. So this is a play for you guys to clip that got TikTok so upset. And you guys tell me what you think. Oh, okay, so this is the TikTok, okay? And then Apple got his, uh, got his hair. Um, you, you muted. But Apple got his goddamn edge up um, oh, pretty uh, snazzy for once. Yeah. Yeah. More money they make, they've been really trying to work on the swag or whatever. But um, in general, though, right? So that video made me not only think about, obviously, you know, does it make you a transphobe if you choose to not be attracted to transsexual people? But does in general, does having a preference, right, or like a certain type of person that you date make you an ist, racist, uh, sexist, whatever, a phobe, a transphobe, homophobe, germaphobe, whatever the phobe is, or a shamer, a fat shamer, a body shamer, a, a slut shamer, or whatever shamer. Does it make you that? Um, and the reason I ask this is because I, I look at um, – there's a lot of narratives springing up around different groups and like if you don't want to date them now i can see if you don't want to interact with them at all that can make you one of those types of people right but i see a lot of the conversations being geared to around like dating and like okay you don't want to date this so you are against this and I wondered, like, the, is that a thing? If you prefer light-skinned black women, are you against dark-skinned black women? Even if your whole family is dark-skinned and all your best friends are dark-skinned and all that, but you just don't want to date them because that's not your sexual preference. And I wondered, like, and discriminatory. And what... All right, so I guess I got two questions. First of all, is it okay to have a preference... Or, or is it discriminatory to have a preference when it comes to dating or who you choose to mate with or be with and sexually? Um, and is, like, at what point does that preference become the point where you do become a phobe, a ist, or a shamer? I, I would say, well, first of all, it's always good to have a preference. If you don't want somebody within your personal space or whatever, or you don't want them touching you or in, or being around you in a certain way, if you got those boundaries up because of that or whatever, it doesn't matter who they are or what they are or where they're from or whatever, You, if you have that preference, you should have the all around right to to have that preference, no matter where it's based in, because that's your body, that's the right to you, and that's your personal space. And we'll put that out there, or whatever. It only becomes phobia and uh, racist and discriminatory when you try to describe the reason for your preferences, and it's based in a in a prejudice, or whatever. It like when it becomes beyond more than I just don't like people around me or whatever. So I'll put it this way. 
<clears throat> I'll use me as the guinea pig and put myself out there. <clears throat> Much. I don't like humans in general. I don't like people in my personal space. I don't like them in my, I'm an introvert. So being introverted, I don't like people around me anyway. So, so even with that, my preference is cis women that was born a woman. And with that, I have a preference within that where I don't want every woman. Like I don't want, you know what I'm saying? Like every woman I see, you know what I'm saying? And it's not even on, it's not on no color base or who they are, this, that, and the third, because I've talked to all types of women. It's on personality or whatever. And that's it. I don't want that personality around me pretty much. And in all bases of my preferences, that's usually the start of it. Well, I would say mostly the start of it is visual pretty much. To me, in my eyes, all women are beautiful. I just know that when it comes to my personal space or whatever, I narrow that down, no matter who you are. But I just think it's only discriminatory and prejudice when you when you vocalize your preference in a disrespectful manner. That's it. Your preference can be if you just want to date light skinned girls, just date light skinned girls. But shut the fuck up about it. Watch this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If you if you just like dark skinned girls, just shut the fuck up about it or whatever. Watch this fact. Much. <laughs> I think that when it comes to the situation of like preference over discrimination, I think that we I look at things from a definition standpoint, right? So like when mm-hmm. we look at prejudice, that's prejudging somebody. I think prejudice is good. It's what su- helps you to survive. Knowing that the tendency of a certain thing is this helps you to prepare for that thing and make sure that thing doesn't cause you harm or take your resources or do something to your family or whatever the case may be. So prejudice is good, right? So, so should I, I say ignorant pre- prejudice so like, or ignorance? There's a prejudice of like, hey, these women who tend to have these characteristics are tending to leave me feeling like this and you don't want to date that. That makes sense to me. If mm-hmm. These women are leading me to not be sexually aroused. I don't want to date that no more. I want to date a woman that's going to make me want to bring it home. Cool. I think that makes sense. I think prejudice is good. I also think discrimination is good. Having a discriminatory perspective is not necessarily in itself bad that just means that you are willing to weed through the shit that doesn't match whatever your objective is whether it be political financial relationship wise it's just this thing doesn't make sense in the plan that i have so i'm going to rule it out in favor of a better option that's all discrimination is right so i don't have a problem with that what i have a problem is when you get to the it's the phobe or the shame and that becomes a thing like I don't want a woman that is over a certain size. That woman can be muscular and be that size. That woman can be flabby and be that size. That size does not attract me. So no matter what I want to do, biologically, I am not going to be physiologically able to give pleasure to that person because that would not attract me. I need a person that is my woman size. That is what attracts me. I like short, petite girls with pretty faces. The rest of the body, I don't care. They can be flabby, toned up. They can be strong. I don't care if you petite short and got a pretty face that has been my 
archetype my entire life. That's my preference. What I deem pretty is my thing, but you know what I mean? Like it's that's what I like. I don't think there's nothing wrong with that. I think where it would become an is thing is if I thought I was better than or would not interact with the other types of people or other types of women on a social level, period. Where like I couldn't be friends with a woman because <clears throat> she looks like this, or I think that I'm better than her because this, or I think she's less than me, and I then start to act systems or behaviors towards that person based around that belief. You see what I'm saying? Like a phobe, like I'm not scared of that. I'm not scared of a transsexual. So, I just don't want to fuck them. I don't want to date them. And if I was a single man, they would not be on my radar as a potential mate. I prefer a cisgender heterosexual woman. That is what I, that's my preference. I am into that. Because my body says nothing about this arouse me. So no. Yeah, and it's then, like a and then, thing. It's definitions. It's like I can't be a phobe if I'm not scared of you. I just don't want to date uh -huh. you. I have friends that have become transsexual. I have friends that are gay. I have family members that are gay. Like, and I'm close with these people. Like, they are like on a familial level with me. But even the friends, like, that's how tight I, I was. Literally hanging with one of my, one of my gay friends this evening. As a matter of fact, at the bourbon thing. Like, you see what I'm saying? Like, these are my people. Uh -huh. I just don't want to be with none of them. Huh. Like what makes my wife my wife is because she fits the preference that I have. She could have been dark skinned. She could have been flabby. She could have been whatever. <clears throat> but as long as she was cisgender, heterosexual, petite, had a pretty face, the rest we could figure out once I got to talking to you. But attractive mm -hmm. this you already had me like intrigued across the room like oh hmm. okay and a preference is a preference man like you can you can't help the preference that you have like no. you just you, you just my thing is like why are y'all gaslighting somebody's preference to to be oppressive over somebody's real like relationship like like preference like why are you I think, why are you so quick to want an awkward situation i'm not attracted to awkward situations so if a person is not attracted to you that's it you shouldn't even care at that moment you shouldn't be asking why you're not attracted to you just not and if you really want the answer, you should be prepared to have your feelings hurt because the truth is not the truth. Don't give a fuck about your feelings and only give a fuck about facts. Fuck about your feelings. <laughs> yeah, like it, it just don't. So why why do people just oh leave the door open for their own? So they can hurt themselves, basically. That's you know, in, in general, like because people are scared to be yourself with. If somebody said, "Hey, I don't, I don't like brown skinned dudes with locks or goatee," I respect it. That ain't yeah. your thing. My, when, when I met my wife, I had a a, a a very tight curl. Well, my hair was curly anyway. Like it's just basically my like a natural, I guess you call it. I don't know what you call mm -hmm. it. It's like a curly fro. But my line was super tight. Angela was always fresh. She liked clean cut dudes. That was her preference. There's women though who like the rugged niggas who like who got like the shaggy beard and like look like lumberjacks and shit like that's their preference. It's nothing wrong with either one. It don't mean that they hate the other person. It's just that's what makes them, you know, get viscous. Uh -huh. hey, listen, don't get, just get, just because 
don't try to like generalize or fit people all in the same same uh I want to say prejudice but ignorant community because we just happen to not want to deal with that lifestyle not even just deal with that lifestyle but be active in that lifestyle pretty much and then and then from with that because we just don't flat out you're not supposed to be flat you're not supposed to be aroused to everything you see this is true you're not you remember that question from a long time ago would you would you what, what did they say would you feel pain or would you feel want to feel pleasure every time the wind blow you're not supposed to feel pleasure every time the wind blow oh, like after a while it, that should like, hurt. It should be moderation. And when you don't have moderation, then that's when you become an addict, an overdose, or even your, worse. You like, like she's way past the point of like she done nothing way too many times, and it's like, all right, she's starting to dry up, but you still going. And now mm-hmm. it's just all right. Uh, the friction don't feel good as it did. All mm-hmm. right, this, I don't want to do this no more. Yeah, you shouldn't. You you, is that shouldn't be a thing. You shouldn't be aroused every time. Like, come on, man. That's 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 gonna be weird. That's that's gonna be weird. B. That's really odd. Seriously. When you was a way kid, too much to think about. You got a tummy ache. Moderation, people. Moderation. Moderation. Yeah. You and you don't want everybody to like you. I definitely yeah. don't. In keeping with the ease of the evening, just get a little pinch. Don't get a whole lot. Just get a little pinch. A little pinch will do you. Dab will do you. His grandma. I don't know, man. I, I think a lot of these people or whatever, <laughs> um, they just extra lonely. <laughs> extra lonely. A little dab. And uh, yeah, they, they mad that they extra lonely. A dab a dab. <laughs> Okay, get you a dab. You know you want a dab. Dab it down. A pinch. A pinch. A pinch. Camp I don't want to dab a pinch or nothing. Stay your happy ass away from me. <laughs> well, yeah. man. Uh, That's my. That is us. I guess. You know, a little dab of do you. Little dab do you uh, 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 this next thing, man. Uh, I think I take us to our black business for the night. My black business for the night. Let's see if, I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. I, I don't know if I'm that nice to this shit. Yet. I got a couple of good black businesses myself. Can you see that? Uh, I ain't came up on my end yet. Okay, so y'all can. Okay, I might not be able to share it. Mm-hmm. You know what? Since I can't, I'm going to just save it till next time. You know what I mean? Oh. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, I got one. Can I do what I you got a black business. Come on with it then. I got a, that, that'll, I, I got a, yeah. I got a couple. I got a couple. Like I said, I had a hectic week. Well, I don't know if we're gonna even have that part up there, but I had a hectic week and I ended up beating a whole lot of lot of people out out the blue. Um pretty much. Um I went to go get gas and this uh, lady came up to me selling one of her podcast um hoodies for like sixty dollars or whatever, and her name on Instagram is uh, I am a Marie speaks and she basically all go around Atlanta doing like on street interviews or some of them are like hilarious or whatever. She did one with Lil Nas X one time also. 
pretty much. But we chopped it up, and um, yeah, she asked, she was like, "Y'all down for collab?" So I probably want to talk to her about that too. And then uh, when I had to do the club last night, I ended up uh, talking to someone that actually is a representative of B Slapwoods, pretty much, which are uh, just some roll ups. They already pre cut and everything and um yeah that's why i use smoke up <laughs> tonight and this my um last black business is this popcorn business called double good pretty much call who and double good double i got good. it right there on the screen yeah okay. this one's called caramel deal right but the main reason I like this is like when I open this up, it's not like Lay's or Fritos, like it's completely full. Like this thing is full. <laughs> full. It's not like it you starts right here in the middle of the bag. You get all of it. Like I don't want to like open it up and then yeah. like all of it come out. A bag of chips and it's just half a half. Mm-hmm. And they got like mad flavors or whatever. But I picked this one because I ain't had caramel popcorn in a while. But they got like uh, jalapeno, and I think they say they got one called what is it? Shy Town Chow Down or something like that, whatever. But it's a black owned business, Come black on, owned man. popcorn business, and I believe it's believe based in Atlanta, whatever. Well, but yet yeah, those my black businesses for the week. <laughs> make sure you support that black business like we need to support our own keep our dollar within our community so it can continue to grow our community and like there's good quality shit going on in our community there's a lot of fuck shit but there's also a lot of great shit and we need to support the great shit so that that continues to be the narrative of support how quality is great. support black businesses and make sure you continue to support the partners as always, man, if you want to support financially, you can always support by going to Cash App, dollar sign partner tiers one, or going to buymeacoffee.com backslash the partners where you can donate for as little as a dollar. You can also sign up to be a monthly supporter on Spotify for four ninety nine a month. Um, all your proceeds go towards helping us to continue to grow the channel and continue to grow our content and hopefully continue to make this uh, at some point our full time gig. So continue to support. Um. Yeah. All all donations are appreciated. Um. And we will make sure we try to uh, shout you out if you give a donation. Um. Speaking of which, shout out to Gator Girl who gave our last donation. Uh. Gator Girl. Sent, yeah, man. She sent in a, a, a nice fat donation on Buy Me a Coffee and uh much appreciated. Uh. It was a while back, but I, I definitely want to make sure I still give her, her flowers for giving us her flowers. You know what I mean? And I appreciate it. So yeah, uh, I think it was doing with me and uh, the wife. He was doing the. Uh, oh, uh, y'all collab together. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I'm saying she's always been a supporter of the pod since way back. Um, and just it's appreciated, man. Like y'all don't realize how hard this is to do with like full time lives, full time jobs, taking care of kids, taking care of families, taking care of wives, taking care of like, girlfriends, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? Like we we, we really are putting a lot into this and uh we appreciate y'all for sticking around with us for two years already and going into three years so just continue to fuck with us um continue to support the channel the easiest way you can do it if you don't want to spend money is to always you know just like comment share subscribe make sure you uh get you know put this content out to other people who you feel may it may resonate with and make sure that you actually uh you know if you got a time Go ahead back and pop a playlist on and uh even if you gotta just put it on mute and let it play on the tab in the background. But we need to watch time hours right now. We're trying to get monetized. So look out for us on YouTube if you can. And um with that being said, man, the next piece, man, if you want something tangible in your hand after you give us money. Wanna give us some money, cool. But you know what, man? I I, I like uh don't just wanna give you money. Then you know what I mean? Please make sure you go to archtrayclothing.com. That's archtrayclothing.com. Please 
make sure you support. Make sure you support. Um, you get all of the good merch. You get AC83 clothing and apparel. Um, you get partners merch and apparel. If you ever been to a brother of a certain age, shout out to him. Great content creator, great um interviewer, great podcaster. Please check out his channel as well. But um, you can actually see him um on his channel rocking the gear. Um, so you can kind of see it on a live model. But uh. It's really dope gear. Pat um uh, face been working on some new designs. He got some new hats up there. He got some new shirts up there, some new hoodie designs, um, new colorways on some old designs. Um, so please, rtrayclothing.com. Please support Rock Your Gear. And uh he usually does it by the season. So as we're about to, you know, as we're in winter, you're gonna see a lot more winter designs. So please check it out. Um and be ready for the spring line coming because I know he's gonna come with some fire for that too. But socks, hats, phone cases, shoes. I mean, I mean not shoes, uh hoodies, sweatsuits, um, shirts, t-shirts, like yeah, you yeah, got flip flops, man. Shit, man, dad has bucket hats, all that shit. So um please support, support, support AC83 and <laughs> partners. Uh, the only place you can get the partners gear, and it's the only place you can get AC83 gear. So you see gear with the partners or AC83 anywhere else, you know it's a knockoff brand already. Um, and then once you finish supporting, man, Pat, how can they get in touch with us, man? At T H E P O D N A S. That's at sign T H E P O D N A S. That is the Instagram, the Twitter, the Twitch. Um, I'm missing one, the TikTok much. And on Facebook, where Tiz Face Pat are the partners. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please, please get in touch with us, get in tune with us, continue the conversations with us. Uh, let us know what you think about the different topics that we discuss. Let us know your personal opinions. Get down in the comments on YouTube. Um, let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, man, continue to support your boys. Um, and to the pod squad, man, my bad. I know it seemed kind of abrupt the way we ended it, uh, but uh your boy Tiz is actually still rather inebriated and I have to go to work or I have to get up and start to get ready for work in an hour and 12 minutes. So I have literally about an hour to try to get me like a quick couple of Z's and then we right back at it. So like that's, that was kind of my abruptness. I just want to make sure y'all know, like it, it, it would blame the, the lifestyle. This is what I mean when I say like our life is really real. We really be like doing this shit for the love and like really pushing through to get this shit done for y'all. So keep fucking with us. We fuck with y'all. Um, as always, I've been one third of the partners. Your boy Tiz, and I'm along with it's the Padawan here, and I haven't slept since yesterday. So n- matter of fact, it's already yesterday. So I haven't slept since Wednesday. Because I've been on grinding that long it's with the clubhouse, club studio, all that stuff. So I'm going to sleep, and I'm the other third of partners. The other third of partners is Face Mob and the internet's man. The internet guys has frowned upon us on this situation, but he would say, Thank you for coming out. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. I killed that. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great week, motherfuckers. We about this bit. Hey. Y'all be blessed. And make sure you support. Go watch a playlist. Buy a hat or a shirt or a hoodie or something. And then let Run us them know. Run them plays up. Fuck with your boy. Love y'all. We about this bit.